Welcome, Neil Stiles. You're the president of the Variety Group, right? Why don't Thank you, you quickly much, do an overview of what the Variety Group is? Okay, the Variety Group is uh, four businesses, Variety, uh, obviously, which is well known for newspapers, uh, two dailies and one weekly newspaper, plus all the associated online products that go with it. Uh, we have MarketCast, which is our research business, which typically uh, tracks audience um, uh, favour for an upcoming film and more importantly our biggest business is looking at trailers and advising film companies on what makes sense from their marketing uh, dollars. Uh, we have 411 um, and then a couple of other businesses associated. Our most recent uh, acquisition actually is very exciting which is TV Tracker which will be a platform for launching a whole series of um, uh, workflow tools for the industry. So it's pretty all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, is it fair to say that, that mobile is very important? Somewhat important? How important is mobile to your business? It, it is important, but I think you said it's all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. That's not something it always has been. I mean, Variety was a very traditional newspaper publisher for a long, long time. Um, and then kind of uh, probably 10 years ago, maybe even 15 at the dawning of the internet, they kind of got excited and put a website up and they built traffic around about 3.4 million uniques. And then three years ago, we walked away from that when we put the paywall up, which, which we'll talk about later. But I think the more important thing about Variety now is, is a balanced revenue stream. And the Variety has traditionally survived in the advertising ecosystem. Right. Right. And from a business point of view, that's a very, um, it's, it's kind of like a fairground ride. You know, when, it's, when you're up the top, it's great. But when you're heading down to the floor, it's not so good. Yeah. Um, and what we've done is we've tried over the last three or four years to balance our revenue streams. And what that's led us to is a, a wide range of product. And, and mo mobile is actually a really important part of every one of those product streams. So explain that. How, uh, how does it? Is it the glue? Is it the common denominator? How is mobile so you, important? You know, actually mobile is important not because it's mobile, but because it's just the, the, the chosen consumption medium for many, many of our customers. And, and we, we fundamentally don't believe that it's our job to tell you um, how to consume our content. Uh, we think that's your job. So if you buy a subscription to Variety, you should, in reality, be able to consume it however you want. You've paid for it. In the same way as television is, is moving in that direction. Once you've paid a HBO subscription via your cable, say Comcast or Time Warner Cable or yeah. Direct, yeah, you, you, you're free to consume it on, an, on, a, on a tablet device or a mobile phone. It's your choice. You've paid the subscription. Um, and that's certainly how we view. So if, if, and I suspect this is not going to happen, but if next year mobile became much less favorable with our audience and they decided, now nah, we're done with phones, yeah. there's something else, yeah. it would be a less important thing. The fact of the matter is it's likely to get more important over the next five to ten years, and so it'll become a more important part of every part of our business. Do, do you split uh, your audience uh, by mobile and print? Uh, do, you, yeah. do you do different content for each? We, we can split them, yeah. and we, we typically have guidance from our systems that tell us who's consuming. We typically use that more as a directional tool. We typically put all of the content on all of the devices, but of course it's very heavily converted. What we've done is we've, we spend a lot of time in, in focus groups and broader quality, quantitative research, figuring out what people actually want on a mobile. And if you're unfortunate enough to be a BlackBerry user, I personally don't believe you want a web experience. I mean, I, I think you just don't want to have to click and go to a web because it's kind of not an appealing environment. I think what you want as a BlackBerry user is you want the whole story then and there, no clicks. And so the BlackBerry experience is very different from, say, the tablet experience, which you can either have the application, which is the paper in digital form, or you can use the website. And so we're not so much developing different content, we're actually adapting the content we have to suit the device and people's, more to the point, people's usage. I mean, the phone is on the go. Publicists right. in Hollywood are completely surgically attached to their phones yeah. and they're consuming breaking news all day long. They, I don't think, want to go to the web on their phone unless they absolutely have to. So, I mean, you talk about that, that content creation piece is that 
Um, do you, you must get some great analytics or some great trends about the activity, the types of activity that people will engage with on a mobile device when, they, when it comes to consumption. Uh, is it in line with what, are you seeing uh, the, the same thing that everybody else is reporting about uh, quick, quick bites of activity, uh, small videos, is there anything that you have been pulling out of that information? Yeah, I mean, much, I mean, we thought the web had a short attention span and we <laughs> talked about kind of, you know, how quickly websites need to evolve and we've got web two, web three, you know, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're in a, it, it changes every six months, um, and including design and functionality. I think the phone just doubles and trebles that, and we're finding that people do want very, very short pieces of information. I mean, we talk about giving people the whole story, and we do that for two reasons. One, we think it's the right thing to do. If you've paid a subscription to Variety, you should be able to get the whole story. Yeah. Um, we also do that to starve our competitors of audience because actually when you go, they need the traffic to go back to their website, we don't. Um, but what we're doing is we're breaking the story up so it's very obvious what the first headline, and with our, and our journalistic teams, um, Josh Dickey on our film team and Andrew Wallenstein in our TV team, what they're typically doing is going back to basics and, and they're taking a very, very basic view of journalism i.e. if you just read the first paragraph, you should pretty well be able to get everything you need. First and last uh, paragraph. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. so we make, we're heavy loading that first paragraph with all of our uh, information. Yeah. Um, and then if you don't want to read on, you don't have to, but you've got the gist of the story. So did you, did you design that specifically for the mobile space? Yeah, so absolutely. It was, it was quick yeah. hits, yeah. low attention it's, span? It's, it's absolutely for phone or Blackberry or, yeah. or Android device, yeah. So it's very, very quick. And it, as I said, it's a double-edged double sword for us. One, it increases our, con our user consumption and provides a great service to our customers, but also it means that if we've got the same breaking news that someone else has got, they're going to use ours, not theirs, and they're not going to go back to their website. And that over time, for businesses, particularly those that are focused exclusively on an online uh, ad model, and that's gonna it's gonna be an issue for them. We said it's really interesting because you're not driving people to a website because mm -hmm. you kind of bypass the web yep. from from your print publication and into mobile. Now, is the mobile application a um, a pay for app or it, it's it's all it's, subscription? Right? It's it's all part of the same thing. Uh, you can subscribe to Variety, yeah. pay one price, three hundred and twenty nine dollars, and you can have everything. You can have the paper. You can have the digital edition via a conventional PC or a, a, a conventional program. You can have the digital edition delivered through an app on phone or, or on, on a tablet device. Uh, you get breaking news uh, with the whole story on a phone device, accessed by the web. The paywall operates and the passwords operate on all oh, devices. Right. Yeah. What you can't do is pick and choose. There's no differential pricing. So you can't come to us and say, I just want it on an iPhone, iPad. It's the same price. I mean, you could you can decide to only do that, but you still say, pay the same price. For that. And is that I mean, when you is that part of the the mass disruption of television? Is there any is there anything else that you see that's uh... well? In, yeah, interestingly, I mean, one of the reasons we bought TV Tracker, it, I mean, owning a paid information business in in the entertainment space has never been a particularly good space to be yeah. because it's a very small industry. I mean, there were less than 60,000 people who earn their living in, in Hollywood, as, as you call it. Um, and internationally, it's relative. I mean, London, Canadian broadcasting, yeah. it's a very small business. So you wouldn't typically launch um, a paid information business. It's been a hard road. Whereas one of our other big uh, businesses is a company called Expert HR, which provide paid information to human resources people. Well, every company's got human resources, so sure. you multiply the product by the number of companies. Yeah. What's going to happen, and the reason, one of the reasons we acquired TV Tracker is, over the next 10 years, the number of people developing content is going to grow exponentially because the barriers to entry are much lower. I mean, as you can see, we're shooting this on relatively modest equipment. You know, 10 years ago, these guys would have had to spend a huge amount more money to actually get into this business. And so having paid information to sell to a much larger audience is actually why we're doing that. So what about, what about mobile? I mean, when you, when you start to think about what, 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 what are you seeing in, uh, in the next 12 months? It, it, it's something in mobile that's actually going to excite you uh, over this period. Yeah, I mean, I, 
I guess it's wishful. It might be wishful thinking, but I sure hope someone comes out with a tablet that's going to compete with Apple. I mean, <laughs> well, that's, you know, I mean, nobody wants to try. No, nobody. Well, <laughs> Hewlett Packard. I mean, yeah. we, we had a conference um, earlier in Los Angeles where we were we were very fortunate to have the Royal Couple visit, and one of the really exciting sponsors was Hewlett Packard, and the Royal Couple came along and you know show, saw the latest tablet, and about three weeks later, Hewlett Packard pretty well cancelled plans to do that. I know exactly. And, uh, I think they're in out, in out, in out. Yeah. But I've got to believe someone will come up with a device that will compete for the dominance of, yeah. of the Apple tablet because we really, it isn't a good place if Apple completely dominate the world as much as I'm an absolute Mac fan. Um, so I think, I think that's interesting because that, that will just inspire a whole bunch sure. of new people sure. to get mobile. And I think, you know, phones, um, they do have limitations. I mean, you know, I noticed the HTC that I was given before I left, you know, it's kind of like, it's a much bigger screen. Well, I'm not sure I want a phone to be a much bigger yeah. device. I mean, you know, holding one of these to your ear is kind of going to be <laughs> challenging. Um, you know, and, and actually, I've never quite got used to the earpiece. And, uh, you know, only cab drivers walk around with a Bluetooth thing in their ear all the time. <laughs> so so, um, so I, think, I think that's exciting as, as the market develops and, yeah. and clearly people are going to have to make it work. I also think Windows. I mean, interestingly, it's not a great success story right now. I mean, I don't know anybody with a Windows phone, but you've got to believe Microsoft have to win in that area. They have to be a player in that area. And that'll spawn a whole bunch of new devices, whether it be phone or tablet type devices. So, so that's kind of exciting for us because every time someone picks up a mobile device, that's an opportunity for us to sell a subscription. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's broad and, and yeah. you know, everything, ra everything being equal, when this industry rises, oh, yeah. it's all, all ships rise in the, in the same time. I, I mean, interestingly for us, I mean, you think about the, the process of purchasing. So I think, ooh, I'd like to buy a copy of Variety. From that moment on, 10 years ago, there were 101 barriers in your way. First, you had to know the number. So then you had to phone or someone had to send you a piece of direct mail. Now, pretty well everything you hold, walk around with, talk to, listen to, can be a device by which you can actually uh, read variety. I mean, interestingly, um, we were working with Sirius Radio where you get the headlines in the morning. I think what's more exciting is actually working with Pandora going forward. As Pandora becomes the chosen Wi-Fi sure. product of cars, automotive industry will undoubtedly go that way. I think it's Toyota already have, and I think Ford might have done as well. What's wrong with having headlines of variety read to you? And that'll be part of the subscription. That's yet another way, and that's another device that you can access our content by. I love it. I love it. Neil, I could speak with you all day, but we're out of time. I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you so no, much. Not at all. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, bro. Thank you.